Welcome to Derm TV Viewer Questions Week for March 2013. Today's episode will feature questions from Derm TV YouTube viewers. And don't forget, as part of Viewer Question Week, I'll be answering viewer questions over live streaming video at beautyrxlive.com. So if you have a question, tune in this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Derm TV. Today's first question comes from Kim A. Dr. Schultz, today my derm prescribed doxycycline and epiduo. I'm nervous about taking the antibiotic only because I'm afraid my acne will come back once I get off of it. The derm assured me that by then the epiduo should be able to control the acne alone. Have you prescribed this combo before? What do you think? Thanks. Kim, um, it's perfectly fine. Yes, I've prescribed the combination, but that's not what's important here. I think that once your acne is under control on both the oral antibiotic and the epiduo, if the oral antibiotic is gradually reduced rather than being stopped abruptly, that will sort of fool your body into thinking that you're still taking the antibiotic. You see, normally when you have a cold and you take an antibiotic, you stop it after seven or 10 days, you stop it abruptly and you're done. But with acne, if you're taking your doxycycline twice a day for th two months and that brings your acne under control regardless of which topical product you're using, you then go from twice a day to once a day for two or three weeks and then from once a day to once every other day for a few weeks and then by gradually reducing the dose, you sort of fool your body into thinking you're still taking the antibiotic and then when you stop it, you don't get a rebound of your acne. It doesn't just bounce back. And you can have months or even years of remission under those circumstances. And of course, the EpiDuo is very helpful in also controlling it, but it's perfectly fine to take that antibiotic as long as when you're finished, you taper off gradually. Second question comes from Pharmac77. Hello, could you tell me please if the IPL treatment or photo rejuvenation treatment would work for rosacea also? Is the IPL treatment actually the laser treatment you spoke of? Well, the IPL is the treatment, is one of the treatments I spoke of. You see, IPL means intense pulse light and is not a laser, but it's a medical device. But the point is, yes, it is very helpful for certain parts of rosacea, particularly the vascular part, where you have enlarged blood vessels, so that gives you red blotches and red blushing. That's what the IPL is very helpful for. But also, that's what some lasers are helpful for. Lasers, particularly in the 532 nanometer range, which is the absorption of hemoglobin inside the blood vessels, which then will also cause those blood vessels to be destroyed with those lasers, just the way it is with IPL. So it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about IPL or lasers to help control the redness of rosacea, the vascular part, the flushing part. But these lasers don't address the acne part of acne rosacea, which is the acne papules, pustules, and so on. DDAX asks, and if we were just in the sun and neither sweating nor perspiring, do we still need to reapply sunscreen? And if so, at what time should we do it? Hour by hour? Uh, DDAX, not hour by hour, but even if you're not sweating, you need to reapply it every two to three hours. And that's because when you're not sweating, you are sweating. What do I mean? There's something called insensible perspiration, which means that when you sweat and you can feel your sweat, that's because you're sweating faster than the sweat evaporates from your skin. So it accumulates and you feel the water. But if you perspire very slowly and the sweat evaporates as fast as you make it, you don't feel it. Well, you are actually making perspiration all the time, 24-7. That's how your skin breathes. It's very important for temperature control and parts of metabolism. But insensible perspiration occurs when you're sweating so slowly that the perspiration actually evaporates before you can even feel it. That's why it's insensible. And when that's happening, your sunscreen and anything else you have on your skin is actually gradually being leached off. That's why even if you don't think you're sweating, every two to three hours, Reapply your sunscreen. Pippin Angelong Ding Dong asks, Hi doctor, if skin cells are continuously being shed off and replaced by new cells, 
Why do scars last so long? Practically permanent. Not practically. They are permanent. All scars are permanent. Let me show you what's going on. Here's our favorite diagram of the skin. And when we talk about uh, stem cells and uh, cells constantly being shed and replaced by new cells, we're talking about the epidermal layer, which has stem cells so that even though you're losing your top layer of cells, regardless of what's happening, whether you're exfoliating or not, new cells are being replaced from this basal cell layer at the very bottom of the epidermis as it interdigitates with the dermis. If you, God forbid, lose a limb, lose an arm, lose a, lose a leg, you're not going to grow it back. That's because you've lost more tissue than can ever be replaced by any type of stem cells in humans. When we get a scar, a scar is because we've lost tissue down here in the dermis. We've lost too much collagen and too much of the little organs that are in here to be able to replace whether you've got stem cells and whether your epidermal cells are replicating or not. As a result of losing all that tissue, your body repairs by just making thick, dense collagen like this red stuff here. That thick, dense collagen is what constitutes a scar. Scars, unlike love, are forever. And that scar tissue stays there all the time, regardless of normal replication, regardless of stem cells. So once you have scar tissue, it's not going to go away. It's not going to be replaced by anything because there's no ability to do that. Makeup Muses asks, if our skin has stem cells, here we go again, which allow them to forever keep replicating, are the new stem cell skincare products on the market worth buying into? I don't think so. Those aren't your stem cells that are in those products. Those are somebody else's or something else's. Perhaps an apple stem cells, perhaps a nut stem cell. Putting stem cells on your skin doesn't do anything to cause your stem cells to actually work and make um, more normal cells for you. However, if you think about it, since stem cells are supposed to be able to continuously replicate, if your stem cells in your skincare product come from apples and you put enough of them on your skin, don't be surprised if you start to see apples growing on your skin. Seriously, I don't believe that stem cells and skincare products um, have ever been proven to be therapeutically helpful, and um, instead, I'd buy a new pair of shoes. Last question today comes from Catalina031. Hi, Catalina. Nice to hear from you. She says, I guess I don't have enough faith in sunscreen. Oh, that's too bad. I still try to avoid the sun between 10 and 3 and wear hats or seek shade when I do have to be out in the sun during those hours. Has the FDA made a distinction between inorganic and organic sunscreens with regard to their testing, recommendations, and guidelines? Thank you, and you're very welcome. Catalina, um, they really haven't made a distinction. SPF um, is, and testing is the same for both organic and inorganic. SPF, of course, referring to uh, UVB protection and PA protection or protection against UVA, again, has to fulfill the same requirements for organic and inorganic sunscreens. So you can be assured that whether it's traditional carbon-based sunscreens or the newer chem-free sunscreens, that they're being held to the same standards by the FDA uh, for the labeling, uh, which tells you how much protection you can expect to get if used as directed. And in terms of some people, understandably so, uh, not perhaps having enough faith in sunscreen, let me reassure you that if you apply sunscreen and apply enough, and there may be different amounts, whether it's organic or inorganic, if you apply enough and you reapply it after swimming, after sweating, and every two to three hours, even if you're not active, as we discussed during the insensible perspiration, I believe that you will get enough protection to allow yourself to enjoy yourself outside between those hours of 10 and 3. Don't forget, I never tell my patients that they can't go in the sun. I just tell them how to protect themselves when they're in the sun. So that's it for today. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. 
If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.